lateral malleolar exposure. Make a 12 to 15 centimeter incision following the posterior border of the fibula toward its distal end. The distal end of the incision can be straight or curving forward. Elevate anterior and posterior skin flaps, taking care to protect the short saphenous vein behind the lateral malleolus, and limit the subperiosteal dissection of subcutaneous surfaces of the fibula to a minimum, limiting the stripping to the fractured ends of the bone or the intended osteotomy site. Medial malleolar exposure. Mark an incision centered over the medial malleolus of a variable length approximately six centimeters. Raise a skin flap anterior and posterior, taking care to watch for the saphenous vein and nerve. Incising the periosteum, you can expose the surface of the bone without devascularizing too far in any one direction. A small incision can be made anteriorly into the joint capsule to expose the ankle joint for osteotomy purposes or arthrotomy uh, observation of the joint. Anteromedial approach to the ankle. A 10 to 15 centimeter incision longitudinally is marked crossing the joint midway between medial and lateral malleoli, ending on the dorsum of the foot. The section through the skin should then identify the superficial perineal nerve and protect it. Incise the deep fascia in line with the skin and cut the extensor retinaculum to the tibialis anterior tendon. Expose the width of the ankle joint as required by the procedure using sharp dissection, medial and lateral, subperiosteal, and subcapsular. Anterior approach to the ankle. Mark an incision 10 to 15 centimeters over the front of the ankle, crossing the joint midway between the malleoli. Care is taken to avoid damage to superficial branches of the perineal nerve. Incise the extensor retinaculum, creating an interval between the extensor hallucis and the extensor digitorum longus. Trace the deep neurovascular bundle till it crosses in front of the ankle. Mobilize the bundle and incise the anterior capsule to expose the ankle joint, creating medial and lateral flaps. Posterolateral approach to the ankle. A 10 to 15 centimeter longitudinal incision is created between the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. An internervous plane is created between the superficial perineal and the sural nerve. The skin flaps are raised and full thickness dissection carries down to the perineal tendons. Incise the perineal retinaculum to mobilize the tendons and expose the posterior ankle joint. Further subperiosteal and capsular dissection enters the ankle joint. Perineal tendon lateral exposure. First define the borders of the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. Make a 10 to 15 centimeter longitudinal incision between them curving anteriorly beyond the fibula. Raise skin flaps carefully watching for the short saphenous vein and sural nerve and incise the deep fascia in line with the incision. Identify the two perineal tendons, incise the retinaculum superiorly and inferiorly. To be able to mobilize the tendons laterally and anteriorly. Exposure of the tarsal tunnel and posteromedial ankle. 
outline an incision between the medial malleolus and medial aspect of the calcaneus. Continue toward the medial foot. Divide the investing fascia below the skin, proximally and distally. Identify the neurovascular bundle before it disappears underneath the flexor retinaculum. Release the retinaculum from proximal to distal until you reach the muscle of the abductor hallucis. You may continue the dissection anteriorly to expose the flexor tendons. Or you may mobilize the contents of the tarsal tunnel and continue the dissection posteriorly and deep to expose the posteromedial aspect of the ankle. Exposure for bunionette surgery. Make a straight lateral incision along the distal third of the fifth metatarsal, passing the metatarsal phalangeal joint to the base of the proximal phalanx. The incision passes between the dorsal branch of the sural nerve and the digital branch of the plantar nerve to the fifth toe. The tendon of the abductor digiti minimi passes plantar to the midline incision. Incise the capsule and the periosteum in line with your dissection and with sharp dissection, elevate the capsule dorsally and plantarwards, creating two flaps and expose the metatarsal head. Dorsal approach to the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Outline an incision over the extensor hyacinth longus, approximately two to three centimeters proximal and distal to the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Incise the skin and deep fascia in line with the skin incision, exposing the extensor and retracting it laterally. Incise the capsule straight in line with your dissection and the extent of subperiosteal and capsular stripping is dictated by the type of procedure to be performed. Medial exposure for bunion surgery. Outline and make a medial longitudinal incision along distal first metatarsal to the base of the proximal phalanx. Raise dorsal and ventral flaps, watching for the dorsal cutaneous nerve as you raise the dorsal flap. Use sharp dissection to incise the capsule along the length of the incision and reflect the capsule around the first metatarsal head to expose the medial side. Preserve as much of the proximal capsular attachment as possible while exposing the metatarsal head. Exposure for hammer toe surgery. Make a dorsal incision over the apex of the hammer toe deformity, exposing the extensor tendon. Incise tendon and capsule transversely, overlying the proximal interphalangeal joint. Identify the collateral ligaments medial and lateral. and expose by a dissection the entire head of the proximal phalanx and base of the middle phalanx. Extensile dorsal exposure for hammer toe deformity. A longitudinal midline incision over the toe extends from the PIP joint to the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Deep fascia and subcutaneous tissue is incised, exposing the tendon 
and releasing the tendon, it is retracted laterally to first expose the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Then a longitudinal capsulotomy is made with the capsule retracted medial and lateral. A transverse capsulotomy is made over the dorsum of the PIP joint, followed by resection of the collateral ligaments to make exposure of the PIP joint. Dorsal extensile approach for exposure of a Morton's neuroma. A longitudinal incision is centered over the space between the adjacent metatarsals and dissection is carried out beneath the skin to identify dorsal cutaneous nerves and vessels by a combination of sharp and blunt dissection. Note the insertion of a laminar spreader between the metatarsals. Deeper dissection between the metatarsal neck will expose the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. Create a space between the nerve vascular bundle and the ligament, and then divide the ligament sharply to be able to identify the nerve from the interosseous muscles to the web space of the toes. Lateral extensile approach for calcaneal fracture repair. An L-shaped incision, as shown, starts midway between the posterior border of the fibula and the Achilles tendon. It curves forward from the tuberosity toward the calcaneocuboid joint. Incise the soft tissues, full thickness, but watch for branches of the sural nerve at both the proximal and distal ends. Perform strict subperiosteal dissection along the lateral wall, elevating the flap toward the subtalar joint. Dissect both above and below the perineal tendons to gain exposure to the posterior facet, sinus tarsi, and calcaneocuboid joint. Medial exposure of the plantar fascia origin. A longitudinal incision along the medial border of the foot by the inferior aspect of the calcaneus extends several centimeters. The deep dissection will remove fatty tissue exposing the plantar fascia along its medial aspect. By blunt dissection, it can separate the superficial and deep surfaces of the plantar fascia from muscle and fat, and then an incision can be made on the undersurface of the calcaneus to elevate the fascia. Posterolateral approach to the Achilles tendon and retrocalcaneal bursa. A 10 to 15 centimeter longitudinal incision along the lateral edge of the Achilles tendon goes through skin and subcutaneous tissue. Here we clearly see the sural nerve. The tendon is elevated from the fatty tissue behind the ankle and the bursa overlying the calcaneus. The entire tendon may be seen from muscle to insertion. Dorsal exposure of the first and second tarsometatarsal joint region. A longitudinal dorsal incision is made lateral to the long extensor to the great toe. Care is taken to conserve the dorsal sensory nerves and to identify the extensor tendon. Here we are shown exposing the base of the first metatarsal. Here identifying the second metatarsal and the interval between the short extensor and the long extensor to the great toe. Once again, care is taken to identify and protect branches of the dorsal sensory nerve. Here we are gaining access to the tarsometatarsal joint and the base of the second metatarsal.
dorsolateral exposure of the sinus tarsi and calcaneocuboid joints, an incision starting just anterior to the distal fibula, angling toward the base of the fifth metatarsal, is used to gain exposure to the sinus tarsi and calcaneocuboid. Beneath the skin, avoid the short branches of the superficial perineal nerve and expose the fat pad overlying the sinus tarsi and the origin of the extensor brevis muscle. Detach the origin of the extensor brevis and reflect it distally and medially, exposing the calcaneocuboid joint. Further dissection medially will gain exposure to the lateral portion of the talonavicular joint, whereas proximal exposure will deliver the contents of the sinus tarsi. Transverse plantar approach to the metatarsal region. A transverse exposure beneath the metatarsal heads will deliver all five metatarsal heads from this approach. The skin and fat is kept as one full thickness layer. The capsule is divided and the metatarsal head and neck can be delivered between the neurovascular bundles and the intrinsic muscles.